morning and welcome to News at 10 on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. First of all, wishing you all a very happy Raksha Bandhan. Well, India has rejected Pakistan's proposal for talks on Kashmir. A foreign secretary ready to visit Islamabad to discuss terror. That is the top story we'll be tracking today. Also, there's some good news from Rio Olympics. India has opened its medal account. The wrestler Sakshi Malik has sensationally clinched the bronze. We'll get you all the updates on that as well. Let's uh, take a look at the other top stories in the headlines. Cheer at Rio for India. Wrestler Sakshi Malik creates history, wins bronze medal in women's 858 kilogram freestyle event. India rejects Pakistan's proposal for talks to resolve Kashmir issue says Pakistan uses terrorism as instrument of policy of diplomacy. Nepal's the Deputy Prime Minister to visit India as a special envoy of Prime Minister Prachanda. Visit after Nepal, a special envoy visited Beijing to deepen bilateral relations with its northern neighbour. And over 80,000 people evacuated as massive wildfire rages unchecked in Southern California. Over 12,000 hectares already burnt. For the day's uh, top focus, now India has turned down Pakistan's proposal for foreign secretary level talks on Kashmir. Now, the government has asserted that terror will remain the core concern and Pakistan needs to address that first. Now, Indian envoy to Pakistan, Gautam Bambavle, handed over India's response to Pakistan's foreign office on Pakistan's invitation for talks on Jammu and Kashmir. India on Wednesday rejected Pakistan's proposal of foreign secretary-level talks on Kashmir. The government asserted that instead it wants to discuss the cross-border terrorism that is more relevant to the current situation in Jammu and Kashmir. The problem is that the terrorism issue has become so central uh, to the relationship that uh, effectively uh, it makes it very difficult for the, uh, for the uh, relationship as a whole to progress. Uh, you, we saw that at the beginning of the year uh, at Pathan Court. Challenges that we faced uh, in the last few weeks uh, have only underscored the point. Foreign Secretary S.J. Shankar responded to Pakistan Foreign Secretary Ajaz Ahmad Chaudhary's invitation. Expressing willingness to travel to Islamabad, he maintained that Pakistan had no local standi in addressing any aspect of the situation in Jammu and Kashmir, which he stressed is an internal matter of India. What you have seen in the last two years is a great effort on our part to reach out to Pakistan uh, and uh, uh, find common ground on the many issues that face the relationship. But uh, 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 the, the last time uh, this was uh, done was in December when the foreign minister uh, went there at the, and at the, for the Heart of Asia conference uh, and we agreed to look at the, the comprehensive bilateral dialogue which we hoped would begin in January this year. Atankabad ko lekar ke sare vishwa ne chinta prakad ki hai. Atankabad ka janam kaha se ho raha hai? उसको प्रोत्साहन कहां से दिया जा रहा है और पाकिस्तान की उसमें क्या भूमिका है ये भी अब बात कोई छिपी नहीं रही है पाकिस्तान ऑन मंडे इनवाइटेड इंडिया फॉर टॉक्स इन कश्मीर सेइंग इट इज द इंटरनेशनल ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ बोथ कंट्रीज टू रिजॉल्व द इशू द इनविटेशन केम अमिड टेंशन इन बायोलैटरल टाइज ड्यू टू द वॉर ऑफ वर्ड्स बिटवीन द टू नेशंस ओवर द इशू पाकिस्तान जो है वो अब अंडर प्रेशर है बहुत ज्यादा प्रेशर में है और वो बगैर बातचीत करे बहुत समय तक नहीं रह सकता तो मैं समझता हूँ कि उसकी वजह से उन्होंने मिक्स स्टेटमेंट दिए हैं एक तरफ तो अपनी जनता को दिखाने के लिए सरताज अजीज से कंडेम कराया है प्रधानमंत्री मोदी के स्टेटमेंट को दूसरी तरफ उन्होंने बातचीत की भी बात की है इसलिए कि पाकिस्तान की इंटरनल सिचुएशन उसको बहुत ज्यादा परमिट नहीं करती इसलिए की भारत का एक फर्म स्टैंड अप है उसमें कोई कम्प्रोमाइज नहीं होगा हमारे जबरन जो ऑक्यूपाई किया गया है उस हिस्से में अगर ह्यूमन राइट्स का वायलेशन होता है तो उसको भी हम कंडम कर रहे हैं और वो जब यहाँ पर हमारे इंटरनल मैटर में इंटरफेयर कर रहे हैं तो यही बताता है कि उनके पास 
ह्यूमन राइट्स को तो इतना वायलेट हो रहा है कोई बात करने वाले नहीं है यहाँ तो हमारे संविधान के मुताबिक हम चल रहे हैं यहाँ पर कोई चीज का वायलेशन नहीं है Last week India made it clear that it will talk on contemporary and relevant issues in Indo-Pak relations. It also included a cessation of Pakistan supported cross-border terrorism. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile the foreign secretary also touched upon India's ties with China. Now accepting that ties with China faced some challenges in the recent past, Jay Shankar termed the ties a mixed picture. The foreign secretary was referring to China recently blocking New Delhi's NSG membership bid and the UN sanctions against Pakistani terrorist Masood Azhar. He however said that India has been largely able to address two big constraints in the ties. One is opportunities for China to invest in India and easier travel regime for the Chinese nationals. News from Jammu and Kashmir and all party delegation from a violence hit state will meet President Pranab Mukherjee today. to brief him of the situation in the valley now national conference leader and former chief minister of the state omar abdullah said that the delegation will press for a dialogue with all the stakeholders in the valley and discuss the real ground situation the leaders also demanded a probe by a retired supreme court judge into the allegations of excessive use of force by the security personnel the decision came on wednesday in a meeting attended by leaders of national conference so the congress party the cpim and independent mlas ये पहली मर्तबा हमने देखा है कि मरकज़ में बजाय ये कि हकूमत इनिशिएटिव ले अपोजिशन ने मजबूर किया हकूमत को कि वो जम्मू कश्मीर पे बात करे हमने अपने कुछ आगे के कदम के बारे में जिक्र किया है कुछ मरकज़ की हकूमत को भी हमारा एक अपील गया है और कुछ हमारे सजेशंस रहे हैं जिससे हमें लगता है कि कम अज़ कम अगर फौरी तौर एक हल नहीं तो कुछ तो हालात को बेहतर करने में थोड़ी सी मदद मिल जाएगी और टू समाद न्यूज एंड द सेंटर हैज अनाउंस नेम्स ऑफ न्यू गवर्नर्स फॉर पंजाब सैम मणिपुर एंड द लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर फॉर एंडमैन एंड निकोबार द फॉर्मर यूनियन मिनिस्टर फॉर माइनॉरिटी अफेयर्स नजमा हब्तुल्ला विल सर्व एज द गवर्नर ऑफ मणिपुर वाइल इलेक्शन बाउंड पंजाब विल हैव अ न्यू गवर्नर इन बीजेपी लीडर एंड फॉर्मर राज्यसभा एमपी वीपी सिंह बदनौर Now, BJP leader and former Nagpur MP Banwari Lal Purohit has been appointed governor of Assam. While a Delhi-based BJP leader and former MLA Jagdish Mukhi has been appointed lieutenant governor of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The president uh, had already made the appointments which will take effect from the dates when the incumbents uh, assume charge of their offices. जिम्मेदारी मिली है हमारे पूरे मित्र परिवार में आनंद है और जो जिम्मेदारी मिली है उसको पूरा प्रयत्न के साथ में बखूबी निभाएंगे राष्ट्र की सेवा का मौका है हैं और इसमें भारत के संविधान की रक्षा करने की जिम्मेदारी है जो भी जिम्मेदारी होगी उसको बहुत ही अच्छी तरह से निभाएंगे नेचुरली माय फर्स्ट रिएक्शन इज थैंकिंग द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड द पार्टी फॉर रिपोजिंग सच ए रिस्पॉन्सिबल जॉब टू मी and i hope that i will be able to perform according to their expectation i had known manipur because i was uh, visiting manipur number of times before the last election when i was the in the party as a as a member of parliament and otherwise and uh, when we were in the cabinet the prime minister told all of us all the cabinet minister to visit manipur every 15 days and now that he has given me this responsibility this responsibility i'll be there working over there for the people and the center has put on hold the appointment of kj elfons as the administrator of union territory of chandigarh after facing stiff resistance from parties in punjab well the turnaround came as the political parties including the ruling akali dal in punjab urged the union home minister to review the appointment of the administrator they argued that uh, it will effectively take away the powers of the governor of punjab over chandigarh and may not be in the larger interest of the state now chief minister prakash singh badal is reported to have prevailed over the union home ministry arguing the move to take uh, chandigarh away from the control of punjab governor will send a wrong signal to the people in the poll bound state 
Uh, soon after the news broke regarding Alfonso's appointment, Punjab Congress Chief Amrinder Singh as well as the AAP issued press statements strongly opposing the move. Let's move on in the bulletin. Now, well, Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister Bimlendra Nidhi will visit India today as the special envoy of Prime Minister Prachanda. Now, this comes days after the new Nepalese government sent an emissary to China. The move to send emissaries to India and China is said to be Nepal's bid to woo its two giant neighbours and firm up bilateral ties after the formation of the new government. Nanidhi, who also holds uh, the Home Affairs portfolio, will begin his uh, two-day visit uh, beginning today. He is likely to discuss matters relating to the proposed visit to Nepal by the President uh, of India, Pranam Mukherjee, and uh, Nepalese uh, President Bidya Bhandari's visit to India. Now, ahead of the visit, Indian Ambassador to Nepal, Ranjit Rai, met Nidhi at his office. Now, Rai assured Nidhi of India's continued support to Nepal in the areas including security and the implementation of development projects. Meanwhile, a special envoy, Deputy Prime Minister Krishna Bahadur Mahara has said that Nepal accords a priority to China in its foreign relations and abides by the One China policy. Mahara made the remarks in Beijing during his meeting with the Chinese Premier Li Keqiang. Mahara said that Nepal will strengthen coordination and cooperation with the China and implement all the consensus between uh, uh, that has been reached between the two countries. His visit comes uh, following anxieties in Beijing over the fate of several projects connecting China and Nepal signed by the former Prime Minister K. P. Sharma Oli to reduce the landlocked uh, country Nepal's dependence on India. Meanwhile, uh, back home, 13 people have died in Gopal Ganj in Bihar after suspected consumption of a spurious liquor. The deaths came despite prohibition on consumption implemented in April. Now, authorities say the reason behind the deaths is not clear and they have ordered a probe. While some family members allege that the victims consumed spurious liquor, others gave in writing that spurious liquor was not the reason for the deaths. Now, authorities say that a single reason may not be the cause of the deaths since they have been reported at different times from different locations under five police stations. Following the deaths, the BJP attacked Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, saying that the state government is working to cover up the reason for the deaths. और जहाँ तक कारण की बात है तो अभी तक मेडिकल रिपोर्ट हम लोगों को प्राप्त नहीं है कल हम लोगों ने एक थ्री मेंबर्स कमेटी भी गठित की थी कल रात में और कुछ बॉडीज हम लोगों को जो प्राप्त है उसका हम लोग कुछ मार्टम करवा रहे हैं मेडिकल रिपोर्ट आने के पश्चात ही हम लोग कॉज ऑफ डेथ की पुष्टि कर पाएंगे बिहार में अगर अवैध शराब बिक रहा है अभी भी अभी लोग पीने से मर रहे हैं तो निश्चित रूप से नीतीश कुमार को नैतिक जिम्मेवारी लेनी चाहिए और खुद उनको इस पूरी इसकी जवाबदेही अपने ऊपर लेनी चाहिए आज उनको इस्तीफा देना चाहिए and now we look at the floods uh, and rain situation across several states in India. Well, flood in Bihar has inundated over 10,000 acres of farmland in at least half a dozen villages under the Patna district in the last 48 hours. Even though there is no rainfall in the catchment areas, uh, flood waters from Mokama and Patna have caused unprecedented rise in water level. The residents of the locality have taken shelter on high places with their belongings. Meanwhile, uh, heavy rains is expected in Kolkata and its uh, surrounding areas on Thursday with a deep depression being headed towards a Charkhand as well. A 70 kilometers per hour storm hit the city without warning on Wednesday evening, leaving a trail of uprooted trees that crushed to death at least three people and left uh, several neighborhoods without power supply until late in the night. Also, heavy rains in some parts of Himachal Pradesh have claimed 29 lives so far, it has caused damage to crops and property and the loss uh, till date has been pegged at uh, 567 crore rupees. Now, as many as 166 roads and three bridges were washed away. 1,426 rural uh, water supply schemes, uh, 580 irrigation schemes, uh, 30 urban water supply schemes, 15 flood protection works and 16 uh, sewage schemes were affected and all were temporarily restored. Well, the Supreme Court has ruled that those below 18 years of age cannot participate in the Dahi Handi festival. Dahi Handi is a popular ceremony held on the second day of Janmashtami. The apex court also restricted the height of the human pyramid to 20 feet, adding that it was dangerous to allow small children to participate in the ceremony. 
The order came in response to a clarification sought by the Maharashtra government on uh, the, four, the August 2014 verdict by the Bombay High Court that limited the height of such pyramids to 20 feet. Now, in 2013, remember, 190 people were injured while participating in this ritual. The Honorable Supreme Court has said that uh, nobody can participate who is below the age of 18 years. And the height of the Dayandi must be 20 feet, not above that. And it will be all over Maharashtra or all over country. Well, time to take a very short break. Up next, we'll get you some good news coming India's way from the Rio Games. Stay with us. Elora Caves, an unimaginable and detailed work of art. The finest example of rock cave temple in India with 34 caves. Built by the rulers of the Rashtrakuta dynasty between 350 AD and 1000 AD. Striking sculptures and murals are the hallmark of the caves. The Kailash Temple is the largest monolith structure of the world, an impressive 15 feet statue of Buddha seated in two story structure of stupa with all the grace. It took about five centuries to complete the structure made with 200,000 tons of rock. Well, uh, wrestler Sakshi Malik created history on Thursday as she won a bronze medal in the women's 58 kilogram freestyle event at the Rio Olympics. Well, Sakshi became the first Indian female wrestler to win an Olympics medal after beating uh, Kyrgyzstan's Esulu Trin Bekilova 8 5 in a thrilling match. Well, she's only the fourth Indian woman athlete to win an Olympic medal after Karnam Maleshwari, Mary Kom, and Saina Nehwal. Well, like in three of the four other bouts earlier in the day, Sakshi won the crucial bout after she made a comeback in the game. She, in fact, had lost 2-9 in the quarterfinals to Russia's uh, Valeria Koblova in the fifth bout of the day before getting a second chance uh, when uh, her conqueror reached the final. Sakshi's victory brought cheers to the Indian contingent that has endured agonizing 11 days without a medal. मैं सब की उम्मीदों पे मैंने करके दिखाया सब को इतना था कि मेडल्स नहीं आ रहे मेरा भी कहीं ना कहीं ये था कि अभी तक इंडिया ने मेडल मतलब की शुरुआत नहीं की है तो मैंने आज ये करके दिखाया मुझे बहुत ज़्यादा मतलब मेरे लिए आज तक की बेस्ट फीलिंग है पूरे दिन में कहीं भी ये नेगेटिविटी नहीं आई कि मेडल को डेडिकेटेड है जिन्होंने मेरा साथ दिया मेरे पेरेंट्स मेरे कोचेस मेरी फेडरेशन जेएसडब्ल्यू मेरी फ्रेंड्स मेरी ट्रेनिंग पार्टनर एवरीवन मीनवाल इंडिया का लोन मेडल होप इन द बैडमिंटन पीवी सिंधु विल टेक ऑन जापान के नोजोमो उकुहारा इन द सेमीफाइनल्स टुडे नाउ विन अगेंस्ट नोजोमो उकुहारा � Earlier, Sindhu scripted a stellar 22-20-21-19 win against former world number one and London Games silver medalist Wang Yi Han to enter the women's semi-finals. However, India's campaign in the men's singles ended after Srikant suffered a 6-21-21-11-18-21 loss against a world number three in a nerve-wracking quarter-final. Well, Indian shuttler Kidambi Srikanth lost his quarter-final match against two-time Olympic and uh, defending champion Lean Dan. Now, Srikanth uh, fought bravely after a poor start, uh, putting in a magnificent display in the second game. But uh, he still fell short as the Chinese uh, uh, won. And uh, Srikanth lost 6-21, uh, 21-11, 18-21.
Meanwhile, in the 48 kilogram weight uh, class wrestling, it was a painful end to Vinesh Pogat campaign as she got injured during the quarter final. Pogat had to concede the match to her Chinese opponent after she failed to get up after injuring her leg. She had, remember, earlier thrashed Romanian Emilia Alina 11 0 in her opening match. Meanwhile, in golf, uh, Aditi Ashok fired a flawless the three under 68 to tie to end uh, tied the seventh after the opening round of the women's uh, golf competition. Aditi picked up uh, three birdies at the second, tenth, and the fourteenth holes and barred the rest to stay three strokes adrift of the leader. Meanwhile, in athletics. Tintu Luka failed to qualify for the finals of the 800 meters when Luka led to the pack after the first 400 meters, but he ran out of gas in the next lap to finish sixth in the heat. Let's take a look at some more events that made headlines at the Rio Games. While well, Brazil thrashed Honduras 6 0 to advance into the men's football final, Neymar scored a brace, including the fastest goal in the Olympic history. Gabriel Jesus got two more, and Marquinhos and Luan added one each for Brazil. They will now face Germany in the final on Saturday as the Germans swept past Nigeria 2 0 in the other semi final clash. And defend, defending Olympic champions, the Netherlands are through to the final of the women's hockey competition after beating Germany 4-3 on penalties. They will next meet Great Britain in the final. In badminton, Indonesia's Liliana Natsir and Tontori Ahmed beat Malaysia's Go Liu Ying and Chan Peng Soon to claim gold medal in badminton's mixed doubles event. The Indonesians won the game 21-14, 21-12. Malaysia took the silver while China claimed the bronze. And Kenyan Consensus Kipruto won the men's 3,000 meters steeplechase gold medal in Rio with an Olympic record time. The 21-year-old finished in 8 minutes, 3.28 seconds to edge American Ivan Jagger into silver. Let's take a now a look at the medals tally on day 12. Well, the US leads the table with 93 medals. That includes 30 gold, 32 silver and 31 bronze. Britain stands at the second spot with 19 goals. China retains the third position with 54 medals. That includes 19 gold. And India finally got a breakthrough in the medals tally by winning a bronze medal in wrestling. And the Court of Arbitration for Sports will hear the World Anti-Doping Agency's appeal today against clean chit given to Indian wrestler Narsingh Yadav. The WADA on Tuesday filed an appeal with the Court of Arbitration for Sports against the clean chit given to him following a recent uh, positive dope test. Remember, Narsingh had tested positive for a banned anabolic steroid in the dope test which was conducted on 25th of June. However, Nursing claimed that he was a victim of a conspiracy by rivals, a theory that was accepted by NADA, which exonerated him after a hurried appeal. Now, if a CS upholds VADA's appeal, then he will not only be able to take part in the 74-kilogram freestyle competition and he also faces a career-threatening four-year ban. On to some cricket news and India will take on West Indies in the fourth and final test match at the Port of Spain. Now India is leading the series 2-0 heading into the final game. Now, India has been the dominant side in the past three tests. It won the first test by an innings and 92 runs. It ran West Indies a close in the second match too. But rain and a spirited effort from West Indies batsmen on the fifth day helped the home side salvage a draw. India then hit back with a 237-run win in the third match. India will now have to win this test to retain the top spot in the ICC ranking. Otherwise, Pakistan will dislodge it from its comp position. It's a, it's a nice incentive, but it doesn't really change anything for the team. Um, our goal has been to play good cricket and we've done that. 
in the past one year or so and we want to continue with the same even last year when we won against south africa because of some other team losing we became number one for a brief period but i think to be the the, the best side in the world you need to play consistent cricket for a span of three four years that's what we feel um this is a pretty uh, immediate and and short term incentive that's what i feel Let's get you some international news now. When China rolled out a red carpet welcome to Myanmar's Foreign Minister Aung San Suu Kyi, Suu Kyi today kicked off a five-day visit to China, the first after her government took over power. Now, Beijing welcomed as uh, the head of government in recognition of her status as the highest-ranking political leader of Myanmar. Now, Suu Kyi met with the Chinese Premier Li Keqiang, and during the meeting, gently reminded Beijing about. reviving its a 3.6 billion dollar hydroelectric dam project which was stalled over public protest for the past 5 years and she is also expected to meet president xi jinping now xiu qi's visit comes roughly one week after the myanmar president decided to form a new commission for reviewing all the proposed hydropower projects on the irrawaddy river now it was remember suspended by the former myanmar military government in 2011 following public protests The Chinese media media regards the Xiu Qi's visit as a diplomatic victory as she is visiting Beijing before visiting the US or Europe which backed her during her prolonged campaign against the rule by Beijing backed military junta. And more than 82,000 people have been evacuated in Southern California following a huge blaze that has ravaged a mountain pass. The firefighters are continuing uh, to track the blaze, blaze that has uh, been described as the most ferocious ever. Now, the blue cut fire, as it has been named, has destroyed homes and disrupted transport links between California and Nevada. Some people have been running for their lives just ahead of the flames. The blaze uh, first ignited on uh, Tuesday in a drought-ravaged mountain pass, and a day later, it has now spread across nearly 12,000 hectares. The flames have advanced out of control despite the efforts of 1300 firefighters although it falls within the mandatory evacuation zone some residents have remained keeping one eye on their homes and another on the fire Now, given the dryness and ongoing warm weather US government forecasters have said southern california faces a potential threat from the major wildfires until december It's currently at 30,000 acres in surface and containment. It burned 30,000 acres in uh, one day. So uh, the, the fast, it's a fast moving fire. It's uh, very intense, a uh, fast rate of spread. Uh, it's burning in very steep, rugged terrain uh, with an accumulation of uh, dead fuel buildup as a result of the fire, uh, as a result of the drought, excuse me. We're in the fifth year of drought. Um, so, uh, you know, that in combination with the hot weather, low relative humidity and winds that we've been having, is resulting in a fire that's moving very fast, very intense. Oh no, no, never. That mountain lakes I hadn't ever seen burn. Uh, the community church burnt by her, and I hadn't ever seen anything like my whole life. And I've been here since '68, and I've seen this mountain on fire. I've seen these mountains on fire, but this thing's coming around, and then I'm afraid of it now. I'm not leaving because we're surrounded by uh, all greenery, and once the fire gets down to the bottom. They should be able to put it out right there, because it's all green, and there, we got all kinds of people up there, and we got all kinds of water pressure. So we're going to be safe. And uh, before we end, a quick look at the Raksha Bandhan celebrations uh, from across the country, and wishing you all again a very happy Raksha Bandhan. Thanks for watching.